The InMotion V13 just might be the most invisible yet important wheel release of the year. With a 56 mile per hour top speed, this electric gyrocycle is years in the making. But I do fear it might be too much too soon. Thank you to eWheels.com for sending me this wheel for review. And if you'd like to make a purchase, see the links down below. Gyrocycles, or electric unicycles as we used to call them, were always meant for portability. They were an efficiency hack for those seeking a futuristic way to move through their day. They were adopted by some for fun and others for commuting. A true replacement for cars, buses, and subways. They offered freedom, sustainability, and fun. As the technology matured, so did the price, size, and risk. But it wasn't long till we could imagine a day when a gyrocycle would go beyond the pale. And although that seemed exciting, eventually there would be a trade-off we would eventually lose sight of micro-mobility. While a full-scale electric vehicle has merit, I think for this tech, it's important we don't cross the line from micro to full-scale. Due to battery cell technology not keeping up with the pace of advancement, we've come to a day when these vehicles have become gigantic. Since the InMotion V13 weighs in at 115 pounds, it begs the question, what is the braking and acceleration like? As we can see here, once again, I have to throw my entire weight off the back of this wheel in order to brake hard. Based on my testing, it's likely the slowest to break out of all the wheels I've ever reviewed. The acceleration is also quite slow to the take, and this is due in part by the large diameter tire, the overall weight, and the motor tuning. To me, it felt like stopping and starting a freight train. Despite the lackluster acceleration and braking, the shining glory of this gyrocycle is the battery and safety implementation. Over the years, I have pushed these companies publicly and privately to implement safer battery standards, and now we finally have them. I asked for individual battery cell monitoring, and they gave it to us. I asked for potted batteries, and they gave it to us. I asked for larger gauge wires, and they gave it to us. I asked for redundancies, and they gave it to us in the form of multiple hall sensors. We all asked for waterproofing, and they gave it to us in the batteries, control board, and overall shell. This wheel has the safest battery tech, cutout prevention, and fire safety we have ever seen in a gyrocycle. And I'm hopeful that the other companies out there will follow their lead. All right, so let's talk about the suspension system here. Uh, similar to the V11, we have a dual air shock suspension. We have one on this side and on this side. 
It's very easy to fill. There are some red knobs at the bottom. You twist those off, you just fill it right up with a little pump they supply you. I weigh about 152 pounds without gear on, and I'm putting about 250 PSI in each side. I think that's sort of overdoing it, but I'm hoping that when I take it off, if it loses a little bit, I drop down to like roughly 230 on each side. I think that works out really well for some of my weight. If you're larger, you're gonna wanna do at least 300, but the pump only goes to 300, so you might need to source a third-party pump. But the one they give you is pretty nice. But in general, you have the pump at the bottom, fill that up, then you have this dampening right here at the top. And with this dampening here, basically you have these little soft pads that you pull up, so these little rubber things. You pull this off, then you use this little orange thing they supply you. It slips right onto it, and then you twist this, and there's one on each side. So adjusting clockwise or counterclockwise will determine whether it's more engaged or less engaged or a stiffer or softer dampening situation for your ride. If I had to compare this suspension to the other ones on the market, uh, it's very similar to the V11, but much better. It is different from the S22 and a bit, a bit different from the Sherman S. The Sherman S is the best suspension on the market, if you ask me, because I mean, hydraulic, you can't really go wrong there. Plus the way they did it, you know, made sense with the other company. Uh, but this one is a close second to the Sherman S. It's a very comfortable ride. If you're looking to take this off-road, I would not advise it. It's just such a heavy wheel, but it's really meant for street. So unlike the S22, where you can take it really off-road and big jumps and stairs, I wouldn't recommend that for this. This is really designed like a car suspension. I think a good suspension implementation is where you don't notice it, where it's there, but you're not buying the car because of that suspension. So it's sort of invisible, and I think it does a really good job. It, you forget it's there, it makes the ride very smooth, and it's almost hassle-free. Again, once you fill this up, probably wouldn't need to refill it, you know, maybe every two weeks or something. So I wouldn't need to carry anything on me to travel around with this wheel. But if I wanted to be safe, I would just carry this tiny little pump and the suspension dampening situation. And otherwise, it's a pretty awesome implementation of suspension, if you ask me. Shackle and chains Straight to the grave, buried alive Rattle the cage Whoa, dead man walking So lock your door, lock your door There ain't no way to go Danger follows you home From the mud, I'm out for blood, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. Whoa, dead man walking, evil comes in disguise, darkness covers the light, devil opens his eyes. Whoa, dead man walking, dead man walking. Nobody gonna save your soul oh. Ain't nobody gonna save you oh. Ain't nobody gonna save your soul oh. It feels really good for, for a tall guy. I'm six foot six at 220 pounds. It definitely is a big boy wheel. This, this feels like, remember the King Song 18XL back in the day when it came out? It's so, it was so slim and so smooth. Everybody called it a pretty wheel. 
this is the new preview wheel. I'm sorry to say, I love this wheel. It's just so smooth compared to all the other wheels. Definitely think this is the new race wheel upcoming. The master. Whoa, you're gonna race this? I think so. I'm trying to see, maybe the emotion will send me a work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love. I just can't get my eyes off it, man. So let's talk about the amenities on this wheel. As you see right here, the bright orange on the front and the back. These are to protect the wheel when you crash, which might happen, hopefully not, but they're just like a roll cage, roll bars. We saw something like this on the Veteran Sherman, but this is implemented a bit differently. It's not fully around, it's connected into the body of the wheel in the front and back. This is meant, as I see it, to help protect the wheel, but not meant to hold up forever. So they are made of what looks like some sort of very hardy aluminum if you were to crash hard on these likely the impact would be taken by these and they would break but hopefully it would protect the wheel then you can just buy a new set of these emotion has made it that way on purpose so i like that we have that hopefully it's not too expensive to buy a new set but moving on from there we have the trolley handle which is a simple push mechanism you press the switch back and it's up and it's pretty decent I'd say it's easy to handle. You know, it's a 115 pound wheel, so taking this around a store or inside of places, it's not the greatest, but for all the handles I could have put on here, I'm pretty happy with this one. I think it's a better iteration of what was on the V12. So very nice handle, good job. It's actually metal, it's not plastic. On top here, we also have the screen here. It's the screen from the V12. Great implementation of it once again, it works very well. Similar things to the V12, but a bit different. So on this one, we have the pedal softness mode, which is very great, it just kind of softens out the pedals for you. Then you have the braking and acceleration assistant. I found my settings, I have the braking assistant to 50% and the acceleration assistant on 100%. It's reverse of the V12. So the higher the number, the softer it is, or the more it's gonna lean. The lower the number, the harder the feeling is, and the less it'll lean. Also on top here, you can change the, what you see on top of the screen. So you have like max speed, battery voltage, you know, the tripometer, like all this stuff can be changed to whatever you wanna see on top of the wheel. Also from the V12, we get the same exact pedal situation as far as being able to use the same design and move it up and down. So I helped them with the design on the V12, create that movable, adjustable pedal situation. So that sort of patented thing that we have going on here within Motion is now on the V13. So I love that we have that on here as well. The pedals are spike pedals and that's great. They're not the greatest, but if you're looking for top notch performance spike pedals, Always there's third party you can buy. I'd recommend checking out the E-Rides pedals. I did a video on those. I can link that up here or down below somewhere for you. On the back here, we have the mud guard. It's very floppy, which is great. The back here, of course, is the charge port, which just pops open. And in here you have two charge ports, plus a USB-A and a USB-C, so you can charge your phone. And then right above that, you will notice that you have the motor kill effectively. So you press this button while lifting. Typical for all these companies, it's kind of useless because if you were to lift this thing up all 115 pounds of it uh, while pressing this with your finger it's kind of like a now you're lifting it with three fingers and a thumb and the other one it's weird on the other side of that we have the light the light is very fantastic as well it's a big wide spread it's very bright all right let's go look at some more stuff Here are my final thoughts. The InMotion V13 is the largest, fastest, safest gyro cycle we have ever seen. It's made for speed, for cruising, for comfort, and for advanced riders. It's incredibly inconvenient and quite ridiculous in size, but the ride 
is quite comfortable eating up all the bumps and potholes like butter. I just wish they could have crafted this level of safety and perfection in a smaller form factor. But maybe that's asking too much from these vehicles considering their infancy and the state of battery sizing. If I had to describe this wheel, I'd say it's like a, a huge, comfortable, safe, and incredibly inconvenient Monster Pro. It's also kind of like a behemoth V12. I think if you're a lover of the monster wheels or you're a larger human, this wheel is made for you. Everyone else, maybe wait until they come out with a 16 inch version of this. 16 inch, 16 inch version. version. Either way, I'm very happy I was able to review this amazing wheel. The V13 represents the best foot forward for this tech and I truly think worth the purchase if you can fit it into your lifestyle. It's a perfect fit for the right people. And with that, I'd say we've seen enough. But don't forget, as always, keep riding, never stop. Coming alive.